Well, I think we'll continue then. <clears throat> 16 of us are here right now. And again, very welcome to this seminar on research communication. Uh, my name is Kiki Stan. I'm communications director here at Mid Sweden University. And together with my colleague Romney, you can introduce yourself. Yes, good morning. Or uh, My name is Ron Vixell. I am your press officer or press officer at Mid Sweden University, former marketing director and media coach and TV and radio journalist. And we will guide you uh, through these two hours. Uh, I'm gonna... Uh, oh, yes, I'm going to say this. We are recording this seminar uh, because we have, I think, five PhD students from the United States who thought it was a little bit early to get up at three in the morning to attend. So I promised that they could attend afterwards and uh, look at a, a recording instead. Uh, I also want to apologize on for beforehand because Ronnie or I, we don't speak English on a daily basis, but we'll do our best. And uh, please don't hesitate to interrupt us or ask questions during this morning. Um, let's see. I hope you see my PowerPoint now. Yes. Perfect. Uh, we are planning to do introductions when we have breakout rooms because there are so many of us. So uh, very soon you're going to introduce yourself in, in the breakout rooms. Um, I want to begin by saying what we're talking about today, when we talk about research communication, we talk about popular science, communication outside the research community. I realize that you communicate within the research community on a daily basis with each other, with colleagues on other, in your projects uh, with international universities. But what we're going to talk about today is popular science to communicate with publics outside the research community which can consist of the general public, partners, policymakers, children, uh, teachers, NGOs, and so on. Uh, so uh, just a little bit of uh, definition. So we all agree on what we're going to talk about today. On the pictures here, you can see some of the colleagues, some, may, some of you may recognize them from EKS, Institution of EKS, when they participated on um, uh, Researcher Grand Prix, which, you which is a competition held every year where you compete in how to pitch your research in a popular way uh, in four minutes. So that is one arena that uh, we can talk about today. Uh, this is the first out of four sem uh, seminars on research communication during this year. We start today uh, by some basics. Uh, we're going to talk to, about why it's important and how we can do it. Um, then we have in April uh, a news inventory seminar. And then in the fall, uh, we're going to have a seminar in presentation technique, how you can present it, your research with both digitally and physically, and pitch it in an easy way so everyone can understand it. And we're also going to have a session about uh, with interview training where Ronnie uh, gets in the role of being a journalist and uh, guides you through how to um, be in an interview situation in front of a camera. So please, uh, you can uh, uh, attend these as well and invites will go out later, of course. A little bit about today. Uh, first, an introduction. Uh, we're going to start by talking about what and why research communication is, and then how and when. And then we'll take a little break. And at 11 o'clock, uh, we have Robert Pettersson from eTOR, who's going to uh, tell us about experiences that he has on research communication. He is frequently um, participating in different medias and other arenas, and he's going to talk about how that has um, enhanced his research and his and 
his role as a researcher. So that will be great, we think. And we're going to end this uh, morning with a talk about what support and aid uh, we can provide from the communications department. So, and we have group discussions within each sections. So very welcome. Romney, take it away. Yes, we, we want you, of course, to, to listen to us, but we also want you to discuss because we think that uh, your, you have different experiences about uh, communication, uh, your science, uh, and it's important that you share it with, with each other. Uh, so we organize uh, breakout sessions during these two hours. And during the first breakout session, which is about to enter right now, uh, you have uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, yourself to your fellow PhD colleagues uh, in your own breakout room. So use one or two minutes uh, uh, to, to uh, introduce yourself so you can learn more about your colleagues. And then we want you to uh, discuss, is communication important for your research? Uh, why do you think so? Or why do you not think so? Uh, I think everyone's back. From me. Mm, perfect. Uh, not so many answers on the menti, but uh, uh, we'll go skip the menti and go uh, directly into the group discussions. Uh, could someone from group one uh, say something about what did you discuss discuss on this these questions? Well, if you remember your group, if you remember your group <laughs> number. I think uh, was we in, in group one, uh, Anne or Sara or yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> I can start uh, with just we uh, talked about um, how important it is to share uh, the knowledge uh, from our research uh, to others uh, and that is uh, uh, important to communicate it yeah perfect group two any thoughts from group two yeah I guess that we were group two, wasn't we? Group two. Yeah. Um, we were just saying that, yes, we have to communicate and, and we are doing that. And it's quite natural thing to do during our research. And we also talked about the responsibility that we had as a researcher. We have got a lot of money, a lot of time and do a lot of work. And, and it is our responsibility to share that with the community within the topic that we are doing research about. Perfect. Anything from group three? Yeah, I think we had quite similar opinions on that. We uh, were talking about that research is going hand in hand with um, education, but mm -hmm. also that we have to simplify um, our research results and extract the important um, aspects of our research for the um, non-academia people so they can understand what we are talking about and not just reporting plain uh, results and numbers uh, where people don't understand what it is. Yeah. Uh, someone wrote, there are misconceptions about the concepts on which I research. So it is important to communicate correctives and perspectives. Uh, does anyone recognize this and would like to <laughs> explain a bit more? <laughs> yeah, Matthias. Well, yes, uh, well, it was me. I'm, I'm, my research is on uh, political concepts in the 18th and, 17th, 18th and 19th century. Uh, among which are uh, concepts, the, the concepts patriot and liberal, and these are concepts that are used in political discussions today. And often the history of this concept is used in political discussions, and often with a lot of misconceptions about their true meanings. 
and the, the the conceptual history shows that there are maybe no it's not so easy to talk about true meanings because meanings change a lot and so i think there is a important um, to uh, get out with uh, these stories just uh, to, to 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 correct this misconception or at least to give new perspectives on them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. interesting yeah Group four, do you want to, to add something to this discussion from what you've talked about? Um, it was me, Olaf, and Yusser in group four. Um, we had a bit of a technical problem, so we didn't get too oh, much time no. to discuss. Uh, but, um, we first actually talked about the importance to present on conference, which is not, I mean, popular science, but still just to get other perspectives on your research and actually get input to it. Um, and then we also said it's important to, as some have mentioned, to actually communicate it because we want to in some way at least affect the society with the research or change things or make improvements, uh, but also to put our research within a larger context. Mm. Um, all of the history you can fill in if I miss something. Mm -hmm. And it seems like uh, you all agree that communication is important for your research, with, which is good. Or otherwise, we would have had to, to stop this seminar right now. Uh, thank you for interesting uh, thoughts. Uh, shall we skip on to the next slide? You will have time to discuss more in breakout sessions. Uh, and we will get back to this question uh, when we uh, when you get to meet Robert uh, after the Swedish Fika. Uh, yeah. Here we go, I think. Yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> um, do you want to say anything more about this, Romney? I think you, you um, mentioned most of these uh, uh, mm. reasons for why to communicate your research. And as I said, we will get back to this when we talk to Robert yes. after uh, the Fika break. Right. And now this one, just to paint a picture about what kind of uh, information or communication we're talking about. And this also show how it has developed, where um, we started with dissemination of information, which is a one-way discourse, where scientists communicate their research to the general public, uh, press releases, and so on, which is not really communication, it's really more dissemination or outreach. And then there's another way to do it in a more two-way dialogue uh, in which scientists discuss knowledge and opinions and views uh, uh, in meetings or conferences or more in dialogue seminars, uh, which is called public engagement. And, and finally, there is something called widening participation, where you can also engage the stakeholders and groups in the research. They can get involved and influence the outcome. Uh, citizen science, RRI, and so on. So research communication can be all from just disseminating a press release to engage the publics or the stakeholders in dialogue or even uh, engage them in, in the research itself. Uh, shortly, I want to uh, say a few words about Vetenskapsrådet or the Swedish Research, research Council. Uh, they have a mission uh, from the government in Sweden to enhance and, and develop research communication in Sweden. Um, here are some examples. Uh, what they do. They have a science festival every year. Uh, they have a forum for research communication. They have a uh, researcher's night, uh, researcher Grand Prix, which I told you uh, in the beginning, and so on. And then we also have public and science, or Vetenskap och Allmänhet, uh, which <coughs> uh, is a Swedish nonprofit organization, uh, membership organization that works to promote dialogue and openness between researchers and the public. Um, and Mid Sweden University is a member in this organization. And of course, we follow both these organizations, the national organizations, and participate in different arenas and uh, 
um, events that they uh, arrange. So it's good for you to know. So now we're going to be a more bit practical and see how and when you can communicate from it. I shall unmute myself, of course. It's time for you to dis discuss once again in uh, hopefully different breakout rooms. Yes. So you get to, <laughs> to talk to uh, some other. Um, we know that some of you, most of you, perhaps all of you uh, communicate your research to uh, communities outside uh, the, the research community already, uh, but we want to learn more about how do you communicate your research today and, and uh, learn more about your own experiences before we get on with, with uh, uh, this seminar series. And uh, we'll try to do it in the same way as the, the earlier breakout room. Uh, if you want to share your thoughts, use Menti, and then uh, since we're not more than 16, 17, I think we will have time to, to get around all four groups and learn more about how uh, you communicate your research and what you did mm -hmm. discuss uh, in your breakout rooms. So, uh, mm -hmm. yep, kick it. And it's the same Menti, and uh, think about, about the, the three different ways uh, you know, dissemination, public engagement, and, and so on. If you have different experiences from those three, that would be interesting to know. Yes, I'll get. Uh, instead of starting from group number one, uh, as we did uh, on the fir first breakout session, I think we'll start with the group that contributed with the first uh, comment on Menti have participated in Forskafreda and Gymnasiedagen as well as research conferences. For me, a balance of writing a monograph, so not wanting to communicate results too early before having finished my own analysis. Who want to say something more about that? Yeah, that was me who put that out. So yeah, um, yeah so it's, I've, I've done a, a few like participations in yeah, those types of, of settings. Um, but I guess they have also been about talking about being a researcher, not like only focusing on my own yes. study. Right. Um, and I think that's where I'm at in this, uh, in this process now, as I say, like, I think maybe it's a difference when you're writing articles for your thesis, because then you will at different points have um, a finished paper. Um, but for me, since I'm not doing that, I, yeah, I, I try to balance like, okay, what, what, yeah, what can I present and, and what do I want to wait with until I'm actually finished with my thesis one day, hopefully. <laughs> um, I think that's interesting what you said about communicating, not your own research, but communicating uh, what it's like to be a researcher. Uh, that's or a bit also, of both. Yes, that's also part of this uh, research communication, I think, uh, to communicate why re research is important and what a researcher is doing for children, yeah. for example. So uh, very, uh, I think that was interesting that you mentioned it. Which, what's, which is the group that has not yet communicated so much with the outside world? Do you want to say something? That's uh, yeah. comment number two on Menti. Can, yeah, I can do that. So um, in our group, I think we all said that we are not having communicated that much with non-academia. Like one of us is an industrial PhD. There you also have um, certain rules on yes. what exactly communicate, what you have to communicate or what you are allowed to communicate um, to non-academia people. And um, also we had, we have one Matthias, he was communicating of course with his um, students talking about his yes. research, but not, um, um, yeah, not over 
other channels and mm -hmm. what we also were talking about is nowadays um, i don't know how it was um, back in the days but nowadays a lot of research communication i think is um, going over social media like twitter like uh, research gate like getting a link out saying here i published something um, at least that's my feeling um, exactly and, yeah how do you marcus use social media do you do you use it when you want to communicate your research mm. Yeah, that's why, why I wrote not yet communicating that much because um, right now I'm also feeling that we are more in a bubble, like just trying to communicate with um, researchers that are in the same field as we are, getting to know, okay, what did they do? How can we incorporate that in our research? Um, what are the benefits? Is there something new I can learn from that? And that's not... It's not, yeah, like Matthias said, with the third purpose of the research communicating to the yes. to the uh, public and contr uh, contributing to uh, present research which can benefit them. Mm -hmm. um, that's more like, yeah, communicating in your own bubble, like I said. Yeah, okay. Uh, if I'm not... Uh absolutely miscorrect i think we have two more groups that hasn't uh, okay wrote so something or said something so uh, which one want to jump in uh group one might be it's okay yeah <laughs> perfect okay so group one actually we discuss uh, for uh, mainly how we do communications uh, the most important thing as a phd students we have uh, some kind of boundary and limitations i mean we have to follow the study plan and so we have very limitations to do work extra, but still we communicate, we believe few things that need to consider all the time. Number one, most of them are the common. They prefer the conferences because this conference is a very good platform and is as usual. Uh, but others were recently is, uh, social media uh, that uh, is a common with the others group, for example, LinkedIn and ResearchGate. And it's uh, true that some some uh, collaboration and some communication is very much possible is research gate and also in the LinkedIn profile when we see and then we can communicate and then we can continue some kind of you know contact so there is a possibility in future some kind of collaboration paper works and that's happened and it's very good for for the PhD students because sometimes the all PhD students cannot finish their own paperwork timely and it's a lot of limitations but some if you have a collaboration and communication work then the, there is a possibly some uh, co-authorships from some papers and some other area that makes a little bit higher on the you know research field so I, we believe this is communication is very important but it depends on the how your research team is uh, because uh, some, some of the research work they're mainly restricted so there might be the supervisors others that don't like to share with others and you know this uh, limitation and some places is uh, they're very openly to discuss and uh, so it depends mm. but we prefer this immensely the, the recently the you know distance in social media is um, on how we communicate mm. and yeah but it's i think that it's after the phd is more open than the, during the phd <laughs> uh, because the phd students more focus how to finish their own work first then they consider the other things to do that Otherwise, yeah. we got the reminder that you will not be paid off if you do this extra work. <laughs> <things>. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, do we have the last group? Some thoughts from you? I don't know which number it is. Yeah, we were group number four. Uh, I can just yeah. share some thoughts. We were uh, also talking about that is... Um, if I connect what, to what you say, Hafizur, at, I, you, it's hard if you see communication, it's just like an extra work, just extra work that it's outside your study plan. And then it's, it's more of a question about your interests. And, and when I'm looking to my institutions and the, the more senior researchers around and the professors and, the, and, and everyone else, I mean, some people are communicate a lot. And like spending what I feel like 50% of the time just communicate to other and some people are really don't they just put their name on scientific papers and then they work on alone in their office so 
I think it's really hard for me as a PhD to find the balance and to, to do the right priorities to where to spend my time. And because I like to communicate, especially in this popular science way, it's really fun and encouraging, but, but is it the right thing to do to, to spend my time on? That's the question. Yes, uh, we understand that this is a challenge and uh, we, we decided not to uh, address the challenge during this seminar, but we, we, can, we can take that to a discussion in another seminar, absolutely, because we know that this is a challenge for all scientists, um, at least in Sweden, possibly in the whole world, because it's not part of your uh, real uh, study plan or uh, you don't get hours for it and so on. We, we are aware of, of that challenge. But uh, I think what you started by saying that you, I think communication should be seen as part of your research work, nothing that is apart from it. It's part of the process to communicate, not something you do uh, separately. Uh, yeah. But uh, yes. Interesting. And I fully understand, uh, Matilda, uh, absolutely. And I think that you will have, uh, if you want to, you can address uh, these types of questions to Robert after yes. uh, when, when he Great idea. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and learn how he handles these types of, of difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, uh, he's one of those who, who really loves to communicate uh, but that doesn't mean that he has more hours to communicate than others uh, so i think your question matilda is perfect for robert as well uh, we we and in uh, the future seminars uh, the, this seminar these two hours are a bit more theoretical uh, the future seminars, for, in, for instance, the uh, presentation technique, the interview training, you will learn more practically on how uh, you communicate. As uh, Albert Einstein said, if you cannot communicate your idea crisp and clear, you have not understood it well enough. That's not my words. That's Albert Einstein's. Uh, we could discuss, uh, of course, if it's right or not, uh, but that's his thought on communicating uh, science. And, and as I said, uh, we have two more, two opportunities to, during this series where you get a chance to actually train your um, communication, your presentation technique and your interview training. So uh, hopefully you'll get some uh, tools in your own toolbox for doing this uh, during this series. Uh, shall we say it's time for uh, a, a short Swedish fika and then uh, um, get back in time to listen to Robert at 11? That's, that's great. Um, we'll meet again at 11 o'clock and we'll continue with the uh, how and when after Robert. Yeah, so. and I'll interview him with some questions first. Uh, he'll get time to tell his story, and then I can guarantee that we will give you the opportunity to, to address him with some questions. So if you already know that you have something you want to address, uh, Robert, concerning communicating uh, science, uh, please don't hesitate to do so. Uh, but now a Swedish fika, and we'll be back in 11 minutes. Um, I've said to the group, Robert, that we will have uh, some sort of interview or discussion talk between you and me first, and then there will be time for them to, to ask questions, if they have questions for you. Is that okay? That sounds great. Yeah. But first of all, a short presentation. Who is Robert Pettersson? Wow. Uh, well, I'm uh, one of the more than 1,000 employees at Mid Sweden University. I uh, uh, have my background in uh, human geography. And uh, uh, some years ago, I became a docent in tourist studies. So I've been 
at the university from uh, last decade, actually, uh, moved here from uh, Umeå uh, to uh, become a PhD student. And uh, ever since I've been uh, working with uh, uh, tourism related uh, research and uh, I also have had other job occupations uh, internal on uh, the university as being head of external relations for a number of years, working with uh, uh, research utilization, research impact, um, innovation, uh, also been working with the holding company of the university who has as one of the main goals to uh help uh, research to to be commercialized and, and reach the market in a commercial way or a, a non-commercial way as well uh, for the last one and a half year i've been uh, head of uh, or director of what's called etur and etur is a, a research center one of the eight research centers at mid sweden university we have our base in uh, Östersund at that campus. So there I am um, supervising PhD students uh, uh, and working with strategic issues related to tourist de development. Uh, besides my uh, uh, professional job at the university, I also have some uh, uh, working tasks in boards, uh, uh, ex for instance, working with uh, uh, the regional tourist board or uh, destination development companies. So uh, that's pretty much uh, who I am or and what I've done. Yeah, uh, and I've already told the group that you love to communicate, so you know what they're expecting. Uh, but 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 let's start from from bottom or from from uh, some sort of uh, uh, question about what what is science communication. For for you? Mm. Well, um, uh, if you ask me, uh, I would say that it, it is uh, a part of a researcher's job, actually. Uh, I think uh, uh, also that at, I would like to li like to think about science communication as an a, a area of competence. Uh, it's not like you're uh, born into being a science communicator or a, uh, that you got a certain talent could be part of it. But I think as everything else or as in a PhD process, uh, science communication is something that uh, develops over time and it is based on, on theory, on communication, on training, on uh, empirical experiences. And uh, it, it's uh, so, so I think it's something you gain, something you can train and develop uh, over time. Um, and then I, I don't know, st stepping right into this course now, you might have already defined science communication, but, but uh, at least my experience is that, that this kind of communication is something that um, uh, can be, be done at several levels. You have uh, everything from a very immediate information where you sort of just tell people what you're doing but uh, that stretches towards uh, uh, a more dialogue based interaction where you maybe uh, start to find research dilemmas in in dialogue with external partners and also communicate research to have it implemented um, and and uh, and this also moves very close to what i would like to call research impact and, and utilization. So, so it's it's a, a very broad scale from uh, basic information to very deep integration where you in the end hardly can tell where's the research and where's the utilization and the, the knowledge in the end. So, so it, it can be a lot of things, but it, it is definitely something you can uh, uh, improve uh, by practicing and trying. Why do you give priority to communication? Um, well, it's a it's a central question because uh, it is not uh, uh, not necessarily encouraged in uh, at any universities and, and in the Swedish system, we uh, we have uh, uh, 
uh, a, a structure where we are pretty much measured based on how much we publish uh, hours spent in the classroom teaching and uh, to be brave enough or uh, give priority to external relations and communication is not necessarily a measured uh, in our system. It's not when you uh, apply for a, a job occupation as a researcher, it is, it is not as important uh, what you have conducted based on, on co-creation and communication as what you have published and, and, and teach. So, so, so the question is, is central. Um, in Sweden, we, we used to talk about the third task for, for several years. Uh, and then three uppgiften in Swedish, and and that was an idea that we have we as researchers had three things we should focus on, and that would be teaching, research, and then the third task that would be communication, interaction, external relations. Nowadays, this is pretty much seen as uh, as uh, the third task is seen as part of research and and, and teaching, and and uh, it could be, but. I would say there are several reasons to, to give priority to, to this. Uh, and one is the unique system we have in Sweden, what's called Lärarundantaget or professor's privilege. And that is an, an, a legally based uh, concept that means that as, as a researcher in Sweden, you, you actually own your own results. You, you have the intellectual, the intellectual property rights so to speak. In, in most other countries, it is the university who owns the result. But as a researcher, you uh, have um, opportunity to, dis to, to decide what to do with the results. And, and this, uh, this is a great opportunity as a researcher. But I, I would say it's also an obligation. Uh, this trust also follows with an idea that uh, you should actually tell the world about the results. It's pretty much in the commitment, I would say, the very first idea of having a professor's privilege was to, to encourage researchers to, to, to reach out. And that goes for, it, it's called professor's privilege, but that goes for, for uh, PhD students and, and students as well. So, so you're all already in that group. Um, so so why, why do this? Yeah, because you, should then you could, but I, I, I like the idea of thinking that um, if we communicate our research, I think the stakeholders in the society can actually make better decisions. Uh, they can make decisions based on uh, scientific grounded knowledge and, and research. And so better decisions can, can make to uh, um, stronger level of, of comp uh, co competing level or a better society, if, if you like. But I also think that as a dem democracy issue, pretty much what we are doing is actually funded by taxpayers. And I think they could expect us to be transparent about with our results. Um, I like to use the term open science. Uh, I think that uh, we, we can be expected to share our knowledge since it is to a large extent paid for by the, the taxpayers. Uh, then why give priority to this? I, I, would, I would actually state that this kind of initiatives fosters your career uh, because not least as a PhD student, I would say that this kind of engagement and activities give you a stronger network, uh, gives you contacts on a personal level. And um, you never know, there might come a future where you uh, have a life outside the academy. We hope you will uh, uh, stay on in there, but you never know, there can be uh, reasons or uh, opportunities even to to work outside the university and and then uh, as you know a waste majority of all the job occupations are today offered via networks and not via uh, 
advertisements in the in the newspaper. So so the, these networks are, are very strong, and and you can sort of strengthen your personal brand, I would say, by being part of a uh, ongoing communication. And and of course we we all struggle to have students coming to the university, and by um, by communicating your research and, and, and being out in social media or uh, on stage performing and stating that I'm, I'm a Swedish researcher, I'm a Swedish PhD student. You could also work as a role model for younger students who consider to, to move on to higher education at all, or even to become a, a PhD student. And I don't know about in your cases, but if you ask people, uh, they they uh, hardly ever consider to become a PhD student. It's 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 a it's not a dream for for uh, a large group of people. It's sort of circumstances they they end up. And and finally, I, I would like to to um, to uh, to to raise the the issue that it can actually be quite fun uh, to work with uh, telling about your research because uh, you are actually experts in what you're doing, especially as PhD student. Uh, no matter whatever you write about, there is a handful of people in the world that knows more about your topic than, than you do. So you, you can actually be, be proud and, and relaxed in the fact that the, the number of hours you spend reading about this topic, you are actually experts and that's quite a uh, good starting point, uh, considering uh, the, the the platforms where where some people make statements these days. So, so you can actually uh, relax in, in in the feeling that you you are experts and and I, I think it's fun. I like performing or or being out there. And and if you're not if you not think this is fun, I think there are still a number of arguments why you should give priority to this based on on uh, uh, career, personal brand, democracy, um, open science, and um, if you're not like performing on stage, there might be other researchers in your group that can do those parts. But to be aware of the Im research impact and your role as uh, uh, researcher, I think it's it's important and and gives gives a lot. Uh, uh, of great values. Yeah. Uh, you're you're quite. Um, I know that you like to communicate, and you're quite open with it. You you say this uh, now when you talk about it. But what you what do you actually gain as a scientist? Can can you give us some examples of recent communication impact for you and what you gain? Mm hmm. Um. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be very concrete examples as, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's always tricky. I, I gain my, my feelings of being uh, asked for and, uh, and uh, to some extent important, that, that gives me a lot. But uh, we also have examples of uh, uh, research funding that runs out of my presence in a national uh, uh, panel discussing challenges for tourist development and, and sustain, sustainable tourism. So I have a couple of examples where stakeholders such as the Swedish Sport Association or uh, the Swedish uh, Tillväxtverket uh, has uh, approached, approached me after uh, being in media or in panels or giving presentations and said, hey, we would like to, to dig deeper in this. And, and we would like someone to look more on this, okay? And then we they can step in funding research. So that that's very concrete. Um, but I would also say, um, uh, if there is an international research program starts forming, and uh, they are uh, looking for partners because we are forced to work together with the research environments in different countries. The, the, it's much more likely that ETUR, my research uh, environment, will be contacted 
to join such a project uh, if we have been active in social media, on research conferences, in, in, uh, in media, uh, because people are aware, we, we have strengthened our brand, so to speak. And, and, and this I can only guess, but when, when ETOR, and we have a very large amount of external funding, I would say the fact that we care about our brand, if that's the correct word, but our, our position in the, in the research uh, community, it is mo much more likely that we are asked to join national and international research programs and projects if we uh, take care of, of uh, our brand or, or position. So, so definitely, and, and uh, yeah. If before asking you any more questions, I want to see, is there any one of you uh, PhDs who has a question for Robert? Shoot. Seems like they're silent. Then I uh, give you another question. How do you do it? How do you communicate your research? Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, when, when I was asked to come here and, and talk about my experiences, I said, I, I, I can do that. I haven't, and it was very, to me, it, it, it gave me a lot because I could sit down and reflect why, why am I doing this? And it was very good uh, to do that uh, because, uh, uh, but, but how I do it, I haven't really reflected. I, I can't say I have a, uh, I, I wish I could say that, that I have a, 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 a plan for, for how to do it. I think it, it's pretty much based on, on uh, opportunities. However, my, I think awareness of what communication can do also uh, brings that I give priority to the em environment's communication strategy. When I work with a research strategy for our uh, center, I think uh, innovation and communication is uh, are important parts of that. And, and there we have listed a number of ways communication can be done. So on a, on a uh, it, it's connects to, to my first answer, what is communication? Well, it is everything from basic information to giving presentations to, to de debate articles to social media. And, and um, I think if I should highlight something, I would say uh, networks is, is very important uh, to, to try to connect external stakeholders to your research, and that can be done very informal way, in very informal ways, and that could definitely be done also for PhD students and PhD projects. Maybe you can ask some people to uh, be in a reference group, uh, people from uh, from outside the university. You will always have colleagues and supervisors that will read your papers and let you know. Uh, what you should have done <laughs> uh, with your paper uh, work, but but uh, wh why don't connect or just be active in social media? That's a very low hanging fruit. Uh, media like uh, Twitter, Facebook, or as in my case, I prefer LinkedIn. Uh, you can you're welcome to 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 visit my profile on LinkedIn. There, I try to be uh, strategic about frequently referring to what we are doing and uh, uh, what we published. And sometimes I even let myself have an opinion uh, that connects, relates to my research. So, um, uh, and, and, and it is, uh, I have a lot of, of comments, I, I think, and, and followers and people are interested. So, and this is something that develops over time. So, uh, so uh, you're, you're welcome to, 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 to send a friend request as well if, if you want to follow uh, this work. Um, but then I, I would like um, 
I, I hope Kiki is, is uh, still in the meeting because I would also like to, to highlight uh, the, the, the support that you can get for, for uh, science communication. And uh, I mean, you are experts on uh, uh, your research and you might develop talents to, to talk about this or write about this. Uh, but there is a lot of support to get from, uh, for instance, the communication department and Kiki and Ronnie and, and their colleagues in uh, maybe it could be to write a, a press medialande, uh, a, a press release, sorry. Uh, and uh, and I, 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 I still uh, think it's uh, uh, extremely uh, good support if I, for instance, ask Ronnie and I'm interested in how can, can, how can we reach what's what's in all this research we've written what has sort of what is interesting for someone else and i realized that maybe i'm not the best one to to um, to make such a judgment but then there are other people supporting or i might not have the technical skills to to do a certain uh, thing but there are others so so take take uh, ask for help and uh, and finally how could this be done? I, I also think a very good way of performing science communication is via media. And that could be traditional media, printed media, mass media, social media, but uh, to, to have an idea about uh, who, who do I reach via which channels and that um, media contacts is definitely something also that you could develop over time. You can you can actually have professional friends among journalists, and you might even say, uh, "Thank you for for uh, writing about uh, this." And and last time you you wrote about that, we had very good experiences from from what you wrote and interested people contacting us. Uh, however, now we have some new. Uh, results and uh, I would like to stretch out to you to have a unique opportunity to to write something for instance you can build trust and like a win-win uh, relation uh, and um, there are uh, most research environments no matter whether you are connected to uh, research centers as I saw some of you were uh, or if you're connected to a certain uh, discipline or department, there are communication support that can help out in formulating and writing. So how, how do you do this? Well, this can be done in, in several ways. And I think uh, uh, it's a lot to gain from trying and, and have the being brave enough to, to try. And it's, it's I mean, it, not much can happen, but there's a lot to gain uh, in working and especially if you work in a, a strategic uh, way with science communication. So, so it can be done in, in several ways. Debate articles, uh, I think definitely a good way if I should pick something also uh, in the end. Uh, since you're experts and since uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, statements that's not based on facts out there, I think uh, to be in the debate and to actually uh, do some statements based on research, that's, uh, uh, I think the society needs, <laughs> needs you out there. There is always the question of time or lack of time for doing this. How do you cope with that? I think uh, the, the way forward here is not to count hours. It is to, to ask yourself, what is good research? And if you reach a point where, uh, uh, where you think that science communication is part of good research as well, one part is to take my knowledge into the classroom and teach the next generation uh, on research-based knowledge. If you are convinced that this is research, then you don't have to ask yourself, should I 
use time to media or should I not? Because then you just ask yourself, okay, how do I use my research time? And then, then it comes. So I think maybe you have to, to reach a, a certain uh, awareness or, or maybe uh, a sort of value-based idea of what is good research. Uh, but I, I haven't really counted my, my uh, or divided uh, hours spent in, in communication or research, or I think it is, everything is, is research. Do we have questions for Robert from someone in the group? Maybe I can ask, uh, do you have uh, the experience that your supervisors expect you to be uh, reaching out and communicate? Or do, do you have the expectation that you are mainly supposed to close the door and, and uh, write, write articles? What would you say the, the culture is like at, at our university at the moment? Who wants to answer? I can I can say a few words on that. My experience is that uh, there's no, there's not uh, there's 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 no one who is against public communication, but uh, you don't uh, put it on the agenda. It's not a discussion point. And of course, if it's not a discussion point, and if you don't put it on the agenda, if you don't use your time to it, it don't it won't happen. Mm -hmm. I can also say something. I have I thought about that question. And, and for me, as, as a PhD student, I think there is no expectation for me going out in the media and talk about our project. That is what like the professors do, the ones that are the real experts in the in the area. And, and my professors around me in my departments, they are writing debate articles, they are talking to the news, they are, uh, they are in the media and the social media and so on. But um, I, I quite struggled to like take the place to do that as a, as a PhD student also. Um, and I, I, that's a shame really. I think um, I, I would just ask for, for a helping hand there from, from my mm -hmm. supervisors and my professors to, to encourage us as a PhD students to also take the place and to practice the skills that you are talking about. Yeah, and it, I think it's also an, a question of uh, credibility, to, to have cred for, for uh, work done and to be part of the uh, 15 minutes of, of, uh, of fame being there. Anne, you, Ekdal, you, you raised your hand earlier. Yes, I did. I was just uh, want to point out that you said what you said about tradition, and I'm in nursing science, and I think that it's also this. There is no tradition, and uh, a bit of shyness, I think. And I think uh, the society don't know what we do. What what are our research questions, and so on. And I think my supervisors don't have any any expectations uh, of me doing anything of this. So I would I also like to have help on this, and. Um, as a question for self-confidence, as you told uh, in the beginning of your career, I think that's, that's also an issue to work on for us as PhD students uh, to, to gain that. Um, maybe a course. Yeah, maybe. So. I, I can also say something. I think yeah. it depends on if you are part of a research center or if you're just part of a subject uh, because i'm a part of the risk and crisis research center and uh, i think for a center communication is the key to be seen and uh, we have a communicator that works with uh, you know, ask us if we have someone that can talk on this topic and then that topic and every week we have requests for uh, if someone of us have knowledge to talk about this and the media wants that we should talk about that. Uh, so maybe it's more 
communication if you're part of a research center than if you just are in yeah, your subject. I, I agree, and, and it might be uh, because you're connected to risk and crisis center, aren't you, Olof? Yep. And, and I think uh, the, the idea of the centers, uh, besides having theme thematic uh, research areas, it was also to have extra effort on uh, uh, external relations and, and uh, communication. And, and there might also be a stronger culture of, of research communication at the centers, although it, it is not limited. But I think there might be uh, better opportunities. And, and I think one of the main challenges for, for us, uh, or for instance, for me as uh, director of one of the research centers, it is actually to, to drag in people from uh, other disciplines. Uh, for instance, uh, I, I can think of that the, the step from, from nursery that, that Anne, if I, if I were, heard you right, yeah, yes, from nursery um, and, and the research in nursery could, could definitely be uh, closely connected to risk and crisis and, or to, to uh, some other center. So, so this is an opportunity to also try to, to engage people that are interested in, in reaching out in communication and, and connect them uh, to, to, the, to a center environment. Do we have any more questions for Robert? Well, uh, in, in that case, I think we, we say thank you, Robert, and uh, for sharing your experiences on this subject. And uh, um, you're free to leave now. And uh, me and uh, Kiki will wrap this up, um, for example, by talking about what you've mentioned, support and aid and so on. Uh, but it was... Uh, very nice of you to, to give us uh, 30 minutes plus talking about this. So thank you, Robert. And I'm sure that if any one of the PhD students have a question uh, that they didn't want to or dare to ask this, it's possible to send you an email or? Definitely. Uh, it's not like I'm a uh big source of uh, information in this case maybe but uh, I'm, I'm eager to help out that's for sure so you're, you're more than welcome to to contact me with uh, uh, issues questions or even suggestions something we could uh, uh, communicate together so uh, yeah you're, you're most welcome and uh, uh, good luck in your future PhD work. Hope to see you uh, in uh, soon any uh, arena. So take care. Thank you, Robert. Bye bye. Okay, Kiki. We have some more slides uh, about uh, mostly support and aid and um, things that Robert mentioned. Uh, but also things that we would like to uh, address for you so that you know what type of support and aid you can get from, from me, from Kiki, from our colleagues at uh, the communications office. Uh, several different activities uh, for communicating your science. These are just uh, some of them in this slide. Robert mentioned them. My uh, field of experience is uh, concerns the first one, media. Uh, and my message to you is that I'm always interested and eager to discuss media aspects of your research. I can't promise you a press release every time you contact me, but I can promise you that I'm interested in discussing your research and see if we together can find out some way to for instance, get a debate article out or a press release out if you want to have some type of, of, of um, uh, if, if you want to address the public. 
about your science. Uh, the digital channels, uh, Robert mentioned some of them. Uh, Mid Sweden University has, of course, official digital channels. I guess you have your own personal, some of you as well. Uh, we try to be as active as we can. Uh, we produce pods, films, uh, for instance, and if you have a, a, a suggestion of a pod or a film, please contact us uh, in the communications department. Uh, we're always interested in discussing that. Uh, we, we arrange webinars, uh, we attend Almedalen, the big uh, uh, arena for, uh, for communication or networking in Gotland every summer. Not this summer, perhaps, because of the pandemic, uh, but uh, other years. Uh, and we have our own research days, for example. Uh, we produce a lot of printed materials and we have training for researchers, media training, interview training, and so on, news inventories uh, at the institutions as well. Um, some of the forums and arenas you can see on a couple of uh, pictures on the next slide. For example, uh, Nyhetsmorgon at uh, Channel 4. Uh, uh, with uh, Niklas Bolin and Kaisa Falaska down uh, on the right hand. Uh, they produced an analysis about the Swedish election in 2018, and they got some media coverage of that. We have Almedalen, we have uh, Science and Innovation Day, we have Business Innovation Day, uh, professionally live streamed uh, seminars or webinars. And we have the European Researchers' Night every autumn, Forskar Freda, as it's uh, called in Swedish. Um, and we, we need PhD students, professors or others to participate in these forums and arenas. We, if we do not have your interested in communicating your science, we do not have we do not have anyone to, to participate with uh, on these forums and arenas. So we have mutual interest. Um, if we can mention cooperation with others, I would like to, to, uh, to mention uh, what Demicom, one of our eight research center has done. Uh, they cooperated with several other scientists during uh, around Sweden, around Europe, and actually around the world uh, concerning uh, reflections from the Swedish elections 2018, concerning uh, ref reflections from uh, the European elections 2019, and also reflections on the American uh, presidential election uh, last fall. Uh, this uh, type of cooperation is a new model that they wanted to, to um, test uh, and they had uh, a lot of media coverage and uh, a lot of networking uh, when, they, uh, when they did these three reports and the following seminars. Good publicity and also every report uh, ended in a debate or article on the largest uh, largest Swedish debate site, Dagens Nyheter, Daily News, uh, one on 2018, as I said about the Swedish election and the following year, the European election and this fall about the American election. Uh, this is a, a, an arena that, that uh, or co cooperation that has been um, quite successful for Demicom. Uh, when you want to communicate your science, there is also, there it's not always a question of simply time, but also about timing. And this is an example of a research project on FSCN. Kristina Dahlström uh, has uh, uh, 
dug into respiratory protection against viruses and, uh, and tribal electricity. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, during the pandem pandemic, these types of, of um, uh, news are interesting for media. So we made a press release uh, in November or December, I think it was, uh, which uh, on uh, just one uh, day, uh, reached uh, 64 different uh, media sources uh, with a potential reach of 45 million uh, viewers or, uh, or listeners or readers. Uh, and I'm sure that the breakthrough for this type of research was helped by the fact that uh, the pandemic, we could connect the research to the ongoing pandem pandemic and the debate about uh, respiratory protection. Uh, and these types of questions is, is questions that we use a lot of time to discuss with you when you want to communicate. Is this the perfect timing to communicate or shall we wait two weeks, two months or perhaps six months before we communicate? Uh, this is one type of, of uh, uh, question that we do uh, address when we try to support you when you want to communicate your, your uh, research. Kiki, more about uh, support from the Division of Communications? Yes, uh, I, I will uh, talk about this shortly because I think we need some time to have a, a final reflection. So you can get all these pictures, um, the PowerPoint presentation, and you can read this uh, as well afterwards. Uh, we have communication officers that are connected to all the research centers and uh, the institutions and in NMT of the planning areas, and they are your contact person and you can can contact that person and uh, they can help you with all from creating web pages to training to press releases and getting contact with Romney, for example. Um, uh, we have the employee portal uh, where we have uh, gathered some, uh, some of our help that you can use. Unfortunately, the most of it is in Swedish right now, but we are on our way to translating it into English. Uh, here you, we have different checklists that you can use, how you, what you think about when writing a debate article, how you can create a scientific poster, uh, how you can do a popular science lecture, uh, how you can create a PowerPoint presentation, arranging events, and if you're interested in starting to blog, we have some advice as well. So these are the current checklists, but of course we, we can develop more if you just uh, let us know what you need some helping hands about. Uh, and as Ronnie said before, we have different kind of courses uh, and training for you. Um, news inventory, interview training, uh, also communications planning uh, or communicative leadership or how to use the social media. So you can just contact any of us in the communications department if you have an interest in these kinds of courses. And how do you know which is your <laughs> contact person? Well, on the employee, Portal, uh, you can see uh, down at the left front page of the employee portal. To scroll down to the left, you can see what kind of different contact persons you have in different issues and in the communication issues we have uh, published accordingly to your institution or research center. Uh, and finally, a few words about the science communication toolbox which the Public and Science, uh, together with Vetenskapsrådet, has published. You can find it in kommuniceraforskning.se and there, it's published both in Swedish and in English. And here is some tips and on different communication activities. So you can get inspired by looking at that. Uh, I'm not gonna say a, a lot of words about this, but I really uh, encourage you to read about seven principle, principles of good research communication. 
these are principles that are uh, the Danish universities have um, produced. Uh, in Sweden, Lund University have done the same. Um, I think it's a really important issue to communicate, to discuss in the research community, what makes good research communication, what is ethical to communicate, how do you do it? Uh, for example, it's important that you are open with the com if, if you have any conflict of interest, which are the financing the research, uh, who is the originator, and, and so on. And I think we could have a, a seminar just on this issue in the future, but for now, in order for us to, to uh, uh, reflect on the final discussion, I leave it at that and encourage you to read it. So, Romney, we have 15 minutes. Yeah, and some closing reflections from you. Uh, you see the questions, uh, what did you learn or realize today? What would you like to learn more about? Uh, we have more seminars in this series uh, and we're uh, interested in input so that we can arrange them uh, to the best for you so uh, uh, and of course you have uh, uh, the opportunity to to uh, possibility to to address uh, via mente your thoughts and then we'll wrap it up together in the full group uh, before saying bye bye so uh, kiki you arrange the breakout rooms and we give you a couple of minutes to to um closing reflections okay you're all back uh, perfect uh, shall we start from group number four do you want to share something about your discussions on your closing reflections group number four i think we talked about a lot of things and not as particularly what we learned but but what happened within what, what our thoughts were afterwards and uh, uh, Someone was uh, asking whether, in, 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 in what manner this, this research can be of public interest. And another one was worried about the supervisors not being particularly keen on getting out with your research before pub, pub, publishing it. And, uh, and, but we, I, I, at least I was talking, and I think some other people were, were agreeing that uh, what we some one thing we learned today that there is there are people out there who is who are also interested in getting out. You know that there is a communication departments, and if you are if you are tuned into these things, uh, there is someone to call and there's someone to mm. be, talk talk with about these things. We're not alone. <laughs> no, you're not Absolutely. alone. Thank you, Matthias. <laughs> uh, group number can three. I just, yeah, can yeah. I just add something that I didn't have time to say in the group. Yeah. Sure. But I was wondering is the idea to do this series uh, recurrently? Um, because for me, I think, uh, say, like the next workshop that is more practical, I think that would be more useful for me towards the end. Um, I'm approaching the end, but I'm not really there yet. So I think I would rather do that maybe in like my final year. Mm -hmm. um, so then I was wondering, is the idea to do this, this series, if not every year, then every other year or something because of new PhDs coming or things being relevant at different times or is it thought as a one-off thing? Uh, we hope we can offer it yearly. It's if you if you think there is a need for it, absolutely. Uh, we started this discussion with the faculties. My first question to them was, it, it, would, would it be possible to have a course in communication science, science of communication? But um, that was a little bit too difficult mm -hmm. uh, it, because you mean all your study plans are already set and so on. So that's why we came up with the idea to do it as a seminar series that is voluntary. And we more than happily to do it as many times as needed. So of course. Cool, thanks. Yeah, thanks, good question. Uh, group number three, do you want to add yeah, something? I think that was my group and Anz. Uh, we actually were reflecting about um, more or less um, 
the same points related to what Mat Matthias and uh, Karin have talked about, you know, um, the aspect of, for instance, um, when exactly is the right time for one to communicate their, their research as a PhD student. And uh, given that we work within different uh, limitations or rather um, within projects, for example, what could be considered to be um, the right thing to communicate? Um, and what you talked about, Ronnie, in terms of the time, but also the timing being important. Sometimes not all the research could, for instance, be um, out there in, in the society as, of, as we have now Corona, mm -hmm. coincide with maybe one or two research areas, but uh, perhaps in my case, uh, transportation planning in tourism context could not be something that is there that could you know grab the attention of the wider public so then this question about what then is the right time and what exactly mm -hmm. to communicate yes. and we also um, reflected upon um, as we talk now maybe the possibility of a course to have this you know communicative science uh, since it's, it's quite important mm -hmm. to have um, um, as a competence and, so, and also to learn more on these issues mm -hmm. as PhD students um, and yeah, of course, we also reflected about um, that we've been informed about the opportunities that there are for PhD students to communicate their work in, in terms of support, for instance, if one wants to reach out, that, as you mentioned, Matthias, one is not alone. One could uh, <laughs> reach out to the communication department and get um, tips on what to do, where and how. Uh, Absolutely. So yeah, that was Great. Much it, yeah. Perfect. Group number two. Do you want to add something? Right, group number one. Something else you want to add? You do not have to, it's just a possibility. Hmm? Well, okay. Thank you for really interesting reflections. Uh, I really take with me the thing about timing, uh, how you can, especially for PhD students, we'll discuss that, Ronnie and I, and see if we can uh, have a, a perspective on that in, in, in the future seminars. Absolutely. Yes, of course, I have a final, sorry, Ronnie. Share my screen. Okay. <laughs> uh, on uh, the, the next seminar in April, uh, we will do a news inventory. And please don't be scared if you see only biathlon related research on these pictures. I've chosen them just to, to, to stress the fact that uh, these, this is media clips from Swedish national television. Uh, or Swedish national radio. And I've uh, chosen them simply to, to stress the fact about timing once again, because uh, these news articles all occurred during uh, the um, national, the, the world championships in biathlon that was held in Östersund two years ago. And we did, we, we did a, a, a massive job before these world championships, as we knew there would be media interest uh, in research concerning this field or this area. And we, we listed about 20 different uh, subjects or different projects um, who were, was working with uh, research connected to biathlon or athletes or uh, cross-country skiing and 19 out of 20 got media coverage and I'm absolutely sure that the, that it was due to uh, the perfect timing that we could do this during or at least close to the world championships. Mm -hmm. We will discuss more about this when we do the news inventory on the 21st of April. Mm -hmm. You will then meet me. Yes, and I think we can promise Ronnie that we'll have the timing aspect as well discussed on that news inventory. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, going to wrap this up. I'm sorry, we're two minutes past, uh, but uh, 
thank you very much for attending. Uh, it's been really rewarding hearing your reflections. And I hope uh, you got something out of this and that we've inspired you to continue to come to these seminars. So with that, <laughs> thank you very much and have a great lunch. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.